Hello everyone, uh, before I get the video started, I just want to let you guys know that I have a Patreon page. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Patreon is a way for people like you who watch my content and enjoy it to uh, directly support me, uh, so that way I can keep creating the content you guys enjoy and love. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, I only have one reward tier, and that's $1 per month. Uh, those who donate $1 per month will be credited in the start of my videos and get early access to my videos. That's just my basic uh, reward. I don't really want to promise uh, too much that I can't deliver on, so that's why I have such a simple reward process. Uh, my goals are pretty simple. Uh, you know, at $20, I'll start doing more videos because I'll actually be able to cover more games because, you know, I don't always get review copies for games, so I do uh, often have to buy games on my own money, and uh, I just can't af really afford to keep doing that. So that's why I have these goals here, and that's why I started Patreon, was just so you guys can support me and that I could keep doing these videos. Uh, and my second tier at $40 is where I'll actually realize, okay, people want to see my content, and then I'll start to step up production by buying a better microphone. I already have an idea of uh, the microphone I want to get. Uh, and I'll also, of course, spend even more time creating videos, and I'll try to uh, add some effects in and make the videos more concise and just try to increase the production value at that point. Because at that point, you know, I'm actually starting to get a little bit of money from Patreon, and, you know, it'll actually... Uh, be worth it to put more time into it. Anyway, so yeah, uh, I want to give a shout out, shout out to my uh, current Patreon. I currently only have one Patreon, and that is Mark from BoilingSteam.com, uh, a nice little blog slash uh, podcast website. Uh, make sure to check that website out, guys. Uh, anyway, yeah, if you guys want to support me on Patreon, you can just go ahead and look under the description for the video and find my profile. All right, now time to go to the video. Hello everyone, this is Ghost557 here, and today I'm taking a look at the Mad Max Linux port. Uh, now the port is brought to us by the beautiful people over, over at Feral Interactive, uh, who have done other ports such as Shadow of Mordor, and I believe they also did the port for the XCOM games. Uh, so you can say they have a bit of experience under their belt. Uh, they pretty much do all the Linux ports for any of the Brothers games that's on Linux, was probably done by them. Uh, so yeah, anyway, yeah, so Mad Max, um, one game, one game I like to compare this game to because I think that they're very similar. In fact, I think they use the same engine, or at least to me, it feels like they do. Uh, is Shadow of Mordor? If you've ever played Shadow of Mordor, then I think you're gonna really enjoy this game because it has a very similar feel and a very similar structure to it. Uh, of course, there is some differences. Of course, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings and Mad Max are greatly <laughs> different, so you know the gameplay is not gonna be the same, but uh, in the world, definitely is gonna be the same. But yeah, you know. Uh, you have like a bunch of collectibles you can get, such as scrap and uh, a bunch of other miscellaneous things. That uh, scrap is sort of your currency, which you use to uh, upgrade your character and also upgrade your vehicle here. Uh, and that is one big aspect about this game what is, this is uh, you your vehicle. Um, you know, it is a big deal to uh, like upgrade your vehicle. If you hit escape here. You can go to the max menu. This is where you purchase upgrades uh, for your characters. You can purchase all kinds of like skills and miscellaneous uh, abilities. Uh, and you can also, uh, if you want to hear to garage, uh, this is where you can actually upgrade your vehicle. Uh, and you have all kinds of uh, upgrades you can get. Like throughout the game, you, you unlock hood ornaments. Like for instance, I'm going to get this one, which of course are purchased with scrap you find in the wasteland. I'm gonna go ahead and get that hood ornament just to just so I have something on it. Yeah, this vehicle is kind of a rust bucket, but later in the game you get different like bodies that can be uh, upgraded, or I believe so. I know at the I know at the start of the game you choose between uh, what body you want to get for your vehicle, and throughout the game you upgrade this and it starts to look real pretty, and you get all kinds of different uh, items for your vehicle. I heard at one point you can get guns strapped to it, which is really impressive. Uh, right now I just have the harpoon for it. Uh, the harpoon has multiple functions. Uh, there are some instances where you have to like open a gate and ramming it isn't enough so you can shoot the harpoon at it and then like uh, it tether it sort of tethers it to your vehicle and then you can just like yank it out of the wall and uh, the uh, harpoon is also nice for when you're doing like vehicular combat. Uh, you can use the uh, harpoon to shoot like drivers out of their vehicles and also you could just like shoot a car and kind of drag it to get it uh, disoriented. Uh, you, you do have a shotgun here although uh, you, very, you have very limited ammo. The shotgun just sort of works as a quick way to kill someone who's giving you uh, you know kind of weed out the numbers. 
Uh, you also have different collectibles, such as like uh, throughout the game, you have like the, you could find like these water uh, sources, and you can use those to refill your canteen. You don't have to worry about your character's uh, thirst, but canteens are used uh, to restore your health. So when your health's slow, it's nice to have it. Yeah, and uh, another thing that this game has that's very similar to uh, Shadow of Mordor is this game has oh, history relic, which once again, like Shadow of Mordor, that game has history relics, which unlock uh, things like backstory. So does, this game has that as well. Uh, and there's also vantage points. Uh, vantage points in this game serve the same per same uh, purpose they do in Shadow of Mordor. When you claim a vantage point, uh, additional like legends show up in your map, so that way you can find landmarks and stuff easier and go to different areas. Like you see here, when I you hit uh, tab, which opens your map, you can see that this game has a very similar map to another game. But yeah, you see here, there's no real legends or anything. If I toggle the legends, there's not really much showing up. But once I uh, capture this point, there should be more uh, like side objectives marked on the map. We're gonna go ahead and. Yeah, this is how you capture the uh, vantage points here. See it? And that reveals the region. So when you look at your map... Yeah, I forgot to mention one is also how you use binoculars. So, yeah, you see here, now that I've revealed this area, you have all kinds of, like, side objectives and just random crap and camps around here. Camps are exactly the same things they are in uh, Shadow of Mordor. It's just like places you can uh, capture for points and all kinds of other, uh, all kinds of other benefits. I had escaped there. What is that? Oh, bios. Yeah, I forgot you have like a bios menu, so that way you can get backstory on things. And also, if you need to uh, like reread re on the story, you can do that there. Uh, you also have you know you also have a menu for all your collectibles here. Yeah. Anyway, so let's go ahead and. Uh, Wow, so these are all the things we just spotted. Okay, so I can destroy scarecrows to lower the enemy's presence. So, is there any other way I could just get out of this thing? Nope, I gotta descend. Okay. Uh, oh, I can fast travel. Can I really? Uh, I never actually tried fast traveling before. I, oh, I can't fast travel there. It's not an area I have conquered. Uh. Okay, so I can only fast travel to certain areas. All right, so let's uh, actually descend here so we can get down. Yeah, it does look like I have to go all the way down now. Yeah, it's a little weird having to go up and then go all the way down slowly. Uh, but it is a very nice view. This game does look uh, really good. Uh, if it, the port itself runs well, um, I would say that this game had a much better launch than Shadows of Mordor, for instance. Uh, this game on Linux runs pretty well. It is a very demanding game, uh, but if you've got the hardware for it, uh, you know, it looks really nice. I'm running the game at uh, pretty much highest settings possible. In fact, I think I am running at the highest settings possible. If we go to graphics here, uh, pretty much everything turned up, uh, except for motion blur, because motion blur sucks. I wanted to max out everything. <laughs> max out everything. Wow, that's a terrible pun. Uh, but I just wanted to max out everything, so that way I could... Uh, Wow, did I just kill that thing? Oh, I could eat it. Okay, <laughs> kill that thing for no reason. I didn't even know you could kill like small animals. Anyway, yeah, I wanted to max this game out just to show you guys how well the port runs. If you look at the top left there, you have an, the uh, FPS counter, which uh, shows you how well the game runs. Uh, it runs pretty good. There, you know, it, it in the wasteland, it usually stays above 60 frames per second. When you start to get into combat, uh, the game's frame rate can dip to like 40, 30, etc. Uh, but it runs well enough. Uh, see, I'm going to demonstrate some of the vehicular combat in this game. I recently got Nitrous, which allows you to be more destructive in combat. Uh, but you also have different maneuvers you can perform. Like, for instance, if you hold middle click and do A or D, you do like a side smash, which can, like I'm going to demonstrate that here. Like that, I, I missed horribly because I'm not really in a good position to do it. For instance, you do this, and you see I just smashed into him. And you can also use that in conjunction with the nitrous to be even more uh, deadly. Oh, he's actually running. So this is a good demonstration. Oh, I gotta get closer. This is actually a good demonstration of the harpoon. Oh, damn, I, I can't really harpoon him that well. I need a more powerful harpoon. 
There we go. Damn it. Yeah, I need a higher level tarpoon or harpoon to tear that tire off. That's unfortunate. But yeah, that's just uh, that's just one little thing you could do uh, in combat is like you could rip parts off the vehicle, including like doors. You could rip the drivers right out of the cars, which is really nice. It's a really nice feature that you're able to do that. Uh, there are no enemies, or else I would. There are no ground enemies, or else I would demonstrate the hand-to-hand -hand combat. But once again, very much like Shadow of Mordor, you left-click a lot, and then you right-click to do counters and stuff like that. Uh, so I forgot how to destroy these. I believe you just. Uh, Actually, wait, I believe I can, uh, I know, uh, one thing, your vehicles, uh, do require gas cans, I have one right here, or fuel cans, as the game refers to them, and you can find those scattered throughout the wasteland to give your vehicle fuel. You can also use them to, like, as explosives, you can ignite them and blow them up. There we go, that's what you do with the, uh, there you go, there's one demonstration of the harpoon in action again. The harpoon's a very fun thing to use, uh, very enjoyable. Really, I really enjoy this game's vehicular combat. Uh, it's a very enjoyable experience overall. I gotta level up. I believe I can spend that point on something. I don't think I have anything to unlock, though. Yeah, this is customization. There is a way to... Uh, uh, your character does have a way to spend, like, you level up, and there is a way to spend points on unlocking new abilities. Here we are. Here they are. Right there. Uh, these right here are my abilities, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, see here, you have these Griffith tokens, which you get for leveling up, uh, and you have to go to Griffith himself to uh, select one of these abilities to increase, which is a little weird. I'm, I'm wondering why you can't just do it from the main menu, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, anyway. So I'm going to go to that stronghold over there so I can show you guys some hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. Whoa! Yeah, driving this game is very fun. Uh, it's very, like, it's got a very, the cars have a very weighty feel, which is really nice. Alright, so let's smash this gate. Oh, Oh, whoa. Damn it. There we go. Oh, I'm actually getting shot at by the snipers. Alright, let me get this. Yeah! Yeah, it's really fun destroying that stuff. Let's have, and yeah, when you're outside of the vehicle, he will repair the vehicle for you. Uh, if you're inside the vehicle and you stop moving, you can also uh, press E to repair the vehicle. But you have to stand still while he's uh, repairing it or else, you know, he'll stop. So let's go ahead and load these up. Actually, let's refill the vehicle, yeah. it's a better idea. I don't know how many gas cans my uh, car can, my vehicle can store. But that's weird to look first person there for a minute. I think it can only store one. Well, that's unfortunate. Actually, you know what? We're going to go ahead and ignite this and show you guys that. There we go. And then we could just pull, throw it like that. And let that explode. Oh, wow, that gave them... Yeah, here's some of the hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. You know, like I said, you left-click a lot, and when there's a chance to counter, you press the counter prompt, and then it counters them. And uh, if you see here, there's a little circle when you have a chance to counter, and if you counter right when that circle gets small and turns green, you get a perfect parry, which allows you to do a deal additional damage. Also in combat, uh, if you get enough consecutive hits, your, your max meter... Uh, fills up and then uh, with that the when your max meter is full you do uh, additional damage there's also these insignias around here that you can break to unlock more stuff so yeah this game just has a lot of collectibles sitting around the game and a lot of like strongholds to capture and just a lot of vantage points to unlock so just a lot of like uh, micromanaging of items and gathering a lot of resource gathering so if you're a fan of those kinds of open world games where you gather resources in, you'll love this game. Yeah, and I have an item here. You can pick up weapons from enemies, and then you could use those weapons for quick kills. Uh, I just used it there uh, to get a kill there, just to demonstrate it. Okay, get up the ladder. <laughs> Ladder's the most difficult thing in any video game. Anyway, yeah, so if you see during when there was a lot of enemies on screen, uh, the frame rate does tend to dip there, uh, but it's not so bad. It's definitely still playable. We're going to eat some food here to uh, restore my health. Yeah, and you also restore your health with 
uh, if, yeah, three is the flashlight. I forgot to mention is a flashlight. There's also binoculars with one, which can be useful sometimes. Uh, four is how you use your cantina, I believe. Yeah, four is for your cantina. And uh, you could use that to restore your health. Uh, but once again, water is limited. So, uh, you know, you do want to use that conserva conservatively. Um, but you can find uh, water resources around the wild to refill your cantina. Um, so yeah, anyway, space is how you uh, roll, which I don't really find myself using much. It's mainly used in combat to avoid attacks, but I, I don't really do it too much. I just counter because I'm not terrible at this game. Uh, it's not a very difficult game. Oh crap, so that's a special enemy there. That's a little bit... Uh, seems to dodge my punches, but now he's good. Oh crap. I'm fine. Like how I just said I'm not terrible, and then I... Yeah, there, there was a demonstration of a perfect parody, and now my max meter is uh, full. So as you see there, uh, it starts to, uh, over time, it starts to dissipate. So you only have it for a very limited time. See here, I'm just... Yeah, you get these awesome finishers when you're buffed with the max meter. It's really nice. Oh, yeah. yeah because, yeah, that guy up there is buffing them, so... You do have some funny uh, dialogue in here. <laughs> yeah, so clearing strongholds can be fun. Let's kick down some doors here. Uh, just the game in general is uh, pretty enjoyable. The game is, I think, about $30 uh, is the retail price. Last time I checked on Steam, it was. Uh, and that's de I think it's definitely worth it if you uh, enjoy these open world uh, games with tons of collectibles and resources together, then I think that you'll definitely enjoy this game. Uh, overall, I'm really enjoying my time with it. Um, and uh, if you get this game on sale, then it's definitely recommended. It's a very enjoyable game. I think people who enjoy the Mad Max series will also very much enjoy uh, this game. And, you know, I think that goes for both fans of the original and the uh, newer movie, especially for fans of the newer movie. Uh, this game does sort of have is sort of closer to the newer movies than the older ones. So I'm going to go ahead and refill my cantina here. I don't know where that guy yeah, who's yelling is. Oh, there he is. Oh, whoa, there's a bunch of them. Okay, yeah, so that guy's pretty well guarded. Yeah, I think you hold left click for uh, heart attacks. So, yeah, there we go. I mean, I mostly just do like small little uh, hits. It's because they, the consecutive hits gives you better uh, meter. Ooh, yeah, that felt really good. There we go. We'll do some hard attacks. Oh yeah, wow, that combat feels really good actually. I forgot how good this game's uh, melee combat felt. You also have a shotgun. If you hold right click. Uh, you get what well, later in the game you get different items, but if you have the shotgun selected and you hold right click, you can draw it. Uh, you do have very limited ammo for the shotgun. You're lucky if you can even find some in the wild at all. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just destroy this uh, fuel pump here. But the shotgun just acts as a quick way to uh, kill enemies. So you know if you're outnumbered and you want to get rid of a really tough enemy quick, you can just do that. You just shoot them. You can also use your shotgun while in your vehicle. Uh, so yeah, we had, the, to capture this area, I had to blow this up, so I have to uh, get a fuel cantina. What is this, I wonder? Oh, explosive barrels. Well then. Uh, let's go in here. Yeah, there's a cantina right there. All right. Oh, there's some scrap as well, so let's collect that. Grab the cantina. See, this game's very enjoyable. Go ahead and uh, ignite it. And then there you go, a stronghold capture. Yeah, and as you could, as you see there, uh, doing that makes it uh, capturing these uh, areas makes it so that. Uh, for one, you don't get as much enemy encounters, and for two, allies start to, uh, to like set up camp here, and then you'll start to regularly get like scrap just delivered to you. Uh, so it's really, really nice. 
Uh, so yeah, o overall, uh, this is definitely a great game. I definitely recommend it for fans of Shadow of Mordor, or just for people who are fans of uh, the Mad Max series. And uh, yeah, it's just a very enjoyable game. Um, overall, I think it's definitely worth uh, $30. And uh, yeah, oh, there's a ladder over there I could have taken for a quick exit. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, it's bright, it's bright yellow, so I really am surprised I did not notice that. Uh, but yeah, definitely a fun game. Um, and like I said, the port is solid. You know, it, it could run better, but you know, it's not as good as the Linux, the Windows port, unfortunately, as always, you know, usually performance is about, I would say it's about 10 to 15% worse than the Windows uh, version, which isn't bad. I think that that's pretty good for a Linux port. So here we have my allies here building the base and we're gonna go ahead and dip. So anyway, uh, that has been me taking a look at Mad Max. Uh, definitely a great game. I would definitely check it out. You also have capture mode here. This is a weird thing. You can enter like this screenshot mode and takes like uh, screenshots and apply filters and stuff. Very weird. Uh, you even have uh, connect a second controller and have a friend control the camera during gameplay and capture footage with a cinematic flair. Very weird feature that this game has, but I guess that's pretty nice. I also have a tutorial which I myself didn't even do. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's enough for me looking at Mad Max. Uh, overall, you know, Feral, did a, Feral uh, Interactive did a really good job porting this game to Linux. Uh, you know, very uh, cool of them to port this game. Uh, and of course the game itself, Warner Bros. did a fantastic job on this game. I think it's very enjoyable. Uh, once again, if you're a fan of, like, these open world uh, games with tons of, like, side quests and resource gathering, if you're a fan of games like Assassin's Creed, Shadow of Mordor, uh, Far Cry, games like that, then I definitely think you'll, if you enjoy that aspect of those games, I think that you'll absolutely fall in love with this game. I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Anyway guys, Squad 57 signing out. And uh, thanks for watching.